Welcome back to a brand new coffee tech break with Yum. Good to see you back on my channel again. I think I got another great video for you lined up because I want to take you through Teams Room on Android running on the G7500 or the Studio X series and show you what happens in Teams when you connect multiple cameras because that is a feature which is available in the latest release of the Microsoft Teams application. Now I got specifically a G7500 because as you will see this guy has multiple USB ports available eh? so I will connect multiple cameras to them. Now what do I have available here in my lab? I got an Eagle Eye 4 USB that is pointing here to my son's partner in crime, pointing right here. Eh? So you will see that in the video when I'm switching to those different cameras. I got here a speaker camera. So that guy is pointing to me. Eh? So I will call that speaker camera. And the audience camera is right here. I got here also an E70 pointing to the audience. And these are the rest of my partners in crime. And so hopefully my son didn't notice. And so I got some of these guys here to just show you how that experience looks like. So you got a little bit of an idea when you are in a Teams room Android, uh, how that looks like when switching between cameras. Some options are not available yet, uh, like renaming cameras, etc. So I would expect in the upcoming releases some changes there, but we will see. At least you can start testing and play around with it. As usual, if you got any questions or comments, just put them under the video. And yeah, and let me just jump into my empty on Android demo room and show you uh, this uh, experience, how that looks like. So before we jump into the empty on Android demo room, uh, let me first show you under the hood where you got multiple cameras connected uh, to the G7500 and how that looks like in the web UI. Now, you have your current password there, eh? or if it's a new device, you need to use the last six digits eh? of, the, uh, of the serial number. Now, what do I have running? So on my G7500, I got 4.1 running, eh? the latest version as of today. And I got Teams version 2301. That's the latest available today. Now, where can you find uh, those cameras, uh, those multiple cameras connected? We go here to device management uh, and all the way below, you will find the cameras that are connected. So as you've seen, I got here the Eagle Eye 4 USB. I got an E70 pointing at me and I got an E70 pointing to the audience. I got a TC8 or can be a TC10 at the table. And uh, I have here, because uh, the G7500 is a codec only, I got here Trio C64 speaker and mic functionality. Now, what is good to know in Teams, when you connect multiple cameras, it needs to be USB connected and not IP connected. That's not supported yet because with this latest release for the one, you can also connect it over IP, but that's only supported within Zoom and Poly at the moment. Uh, probably something which will happen in the future, uh, but yeah, I would say just keep an eye on my channel uh, and I keep you updated on that, uh, on that area. So now I got those cameras USB connected, that in the basis. Here you go. Welcome into my MTR on Android demo room. And so in this room, I can show you exact experience when a user walks in, sets up a meeting, and uh, how can they switch between those different cameras. And as I said, uh, with the G7500, connect multiple cameras to it, uh, but it can even be an X70, where you got an E70, maybe on the other side of the, of the room, uh, and it pointing towards the, uh, the speaker at the front. So there's different scenarios possible, eh? but I just want to show you multiple cameras today eh? with a G7500. Now, the first thing what you can do is if you have multiple cameras, you can decide which camera is your main camera. So as soon as you set up the meeting, what will be visible for the users? And that is, I think, usually the audience. And eh? so where can you set that main camera? Well, you need to go to more, you go here to settings, then you need to go to device settings. You go to the admin settings. Here you log in. 
here you go. So now you go to Teams Admin Settings, you go to Devices, and there you will find the option Room Camera. So I select that, and now you can select your main camera. And will this be the external, which is in my case at the, the audience, or will it be the front and pointing to the speaker, or will it be an external, which can be a side camera. So now we'll keep it to external too. And here you can decide uh, which camera is your main camera. You can even set the default framing, uh, but I will do that a bit later during a meeting. Uh, so we'll show you how you can change framing or turn off framing, etc. But here you can set at least the main room camera and uh, which need to be used. All right. So showed you main camera. Now, what do we have here in this room? Here on the left side, you see big screen. So that is the TV UI. So if you got a touch screen connected, then in this case, I got a mouse connected so I can easily navigate here, but it can even be a touch screen. And here below, I got the TC8. And so I made it a bit bigger. That will be at the table. And you can even combine that in the latest release. So you can combine it. So you can use a touch screen to start meeting. At the same time, you can use now the TC8 eight or TC 10 and uh, to start a meeting, but you need to enable it. And there are as in a, like a toggle where you can say like, Hey, I got a touch screen enable also and uh, the, the interface on the, uh, on the big screen. So just be aware of that. I created some videos of that, uh, uh, some shorts of that. So you should be able to find them very quickly. Now, let me show you how can you switch between those different cameras? Well, we just set up a meeting first. So let me do that. And first I will show you this on the TV UI. Yeah? So you got a little bit of an idea of what's going on. Directly you saw the audience. Uh, so I got my audience sitting right there. Here you go. Audience sitting ready. This is the E70 here pointing to the group. And this is my main camera. Now, when you got multiple cameras connected, you will see here an option. Here you go. So you can click this camera option. And what you will see is that will give you a new frame. Here you can see a sort of sneak peek eh, of the camera. So that is, I think, really, really handy. And you can turn the tracking on and off, which can be composite. And that means you can find the different participants in the room and create them in different frames. Eh? You have active speaker where it will find the active speaker eh, using the, uh, the camera tracking. And you got room, which is group tracking eh, under uh, underneath. So you can set this by default and then it will, yeah, it will find the participants in the room and give that optimal view as possible. Now, same thing, you can switch here to a zero. This is my camera right here. Here you go. So I'm sitting now and putting it as the speaker. So I can also turn on here framing for me. Here you go. So what happens when my son's partner in crime are entering the room, it will try to put everybody into his own frame. And that creates that sort of meeting equality that can be up to six participants in the room. After that, it will fall back to group tracking. Uh, but I think it's a really nice functionality because it doesn't matter if you sit nearby the table, if you sit further in the room, it will try to put everybody equally in the frame, as you see right here. Eh? And even if I put it further out in the room, it will try to reframe. And uh, just like me, I think this is a really, really nice uh, tracking feature. Now, the other option is uh, speaker tracking, of course, uh, which just finds the speaker in the room uh, and uh, as, as good as possible and with the microphones inside the camera. And then we got room and here it will try to figure out if multiple participants are in the room and it will try to figure out as much as possible that everybody is visible. So let me switch now, for example, to front three, which is maybe a side room camera. Here you go. So this is the Eagle i4 USB. So you can easily switch also to that camera. Now let me show you this on the TC8 or TC10 and how that looks like. So we'll jump out of the menu and let's go now to the TC8 uh, here below. So you got a sort of similar menu. You see the camera and the drop down here. So if I click on that, 
what you see immediately is that the TV UI is muted, eh? the video is muted. So I can select now camera. So you don't see tracking here because this is the Eagle Eye 4 USB, which doesn't have any tracking. So I can select the camera. I can select here external two, for example, eh? which is the camera pointing to the audience. I have people framing uh, or I have framing on it, which can be composite, which is the people framing, active speaker or room. And if I jump out of the menu, what you will see, it will immediately give you that video image. Yeah? So it's a bit of different behavior. But as I said, I think there's still some works there eh? because yeah, front zero, external two, external three, doesn't make any sense for an uh, for an, uh, yeah, a user walking into the room. So I would still expect some uh, some works here in the uh, upcoming software updates. But as I said uh, today, I just wanted to give you a sort of uh, view of uh, what is possible. And yeah, I would say just experiment, experiment uh, with this uh, in a sort of test room. Uh, yeah, get some uh, some hands on with this and, uh, and play around with it. Now I can show you quickly what's going on. And so when you select those different cameras and different Different framing options. Let me show you in the Studio X what will happen there. So first let me go here in the web UI to the cameras, the video inputs. So here you will see the different connected cameras. So I got here the e safety speaker, which is the camera here pointing to me. I have here the e safety audience. This is the camera here pointing here to the my friends in the window. And I have an Eagle Eye 4 USB, just the big and side shot camera. Now, if you want to change framing options, eh, let me, for example, pick the E70 speaker. We go on the TCA to those camera options and we have here, for example, external two, and eh, which is that camera that E70 pointing at me. Now, let me turn on the framing and see what you notice on the right. Tracking is enabled. It's now in composite, that means people framing. If I put it to active speaker, and you see frame speaker, it immediately changes here in the Studio X. So it's everything is on the fly and room is the frame group. And so you can easily switch in the Teams UI now between those different tracking options. Really, really nice. So this is the and the E70 pointing at the speaker. I can also go to the other camera, that is the audience camera, that is the front zero, that is this one. And here the same thing, I can turn tracking off and you can immediately see that the tracking is now turned off here with the audience camera. You turn tracking on again, here you go. It's now in composite, uh, people framing is correct. Turn here the frame speaker, which is the active speaker, and the room is the frame group. So you see, this is what it's using under the hood in the studio. It's just to show you uh, what is happening in the background. I think really nice. But as I said, uh, it's still a sort of a preview mode there uh, because uh, the naming which you see right here is not uh, picked up by the Teams client yet. Uh, so there's probably still some things in the, in the works, but I just uh, wanted to give you a quick yeah, preview of, uh, of the options that are possible. Here ends the coffee tech break for today. Hopefully you uh, enjoyed it. It was a sort of sneak peek eh, and to show you what is possible with NTR on Android and using multiple cameras. So as you've seen, I think it is a sort of preview mode and eh, naming a convention and things. There's still some things to do there probably uh, that will come in the, in the next releases. But at least, uh, yeah, I would recommend if you want to use these features, I think you now have the chance to uh, at least start, uh, start playing around with it. Now, if you got any questions or comments, just leave them under the video. And of course, I'm already looking forward uh, to see you in the next video.